Hello and welcome to episode 31 of the Sussex by the Sea podcast, a podcast about all things Hastings United. I'm your host Chris Slaverick and on the show today we have the star man himself, Warren Worrell. We get his thoughts as we head into a new season. We also have Hastings' own Motti Rice Eagle with a review of the pre-season for the women's team, plus what he's going to do for the podcast every week for this season. Also on the show we have Safety Dave himself, Dave Russell, Adam Carter, Adam Smith from the Hastings United Independent Supporters Club talking pre-season wrap-up and how we see it going for the U's this coming season. Enjoy Hastings fans. And now over to the star man, Ryan Moore. Right, what's up with the hair? All right, all gone, all gone. Those wavy locks, where have they gone? Yeah. Oh, I had to get rid of them, they were getting way too long. You can see they're in the screen, oh, they're outrageous. Oh, fair enough. Oh, he starts it on a controversy, absolute controversy, the haircut there. No, not the haircut itself, don't get me wrong. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, fair enough. No, no, don't get me wrong, I don't want to, no, we're not starting hot there, no, it's, you get lovely, well, lovely hair. Anyway, getting started, the absolute, absolute pleasure, honour, the star man is on. Just, no, thank you for having me, thank you uh, for having me. Yeah, no, I mean, you're, whether you know it or not, you're, you're a crowd favourite. Well, I love it. It that means a lot. Right. That means a lot. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So, just, just, I'll crack straight into it. Right, I was perfect. Yeah. So, um, from, from, um, from, from your earlier days, that you, you were, were you, a, you're a product of uh, Brighton Youth Academy. Is that uh, yes? Case? Yeah. When I was younger, yeah. When I was much younger, so I was there from nine to eleven, and then left for a year because I just missed playing football with my mates, really. Mm. Um, and then went back from thirteen to sixteen. Yeah, because what I was going to ask was, is anyone in that setup that you keep in contact with? I mean, um, any of the guys that have gone on and, and done anything uh, um, in non-leagues or higher yeah, up? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's one of them ones. If you, It's hard to keep in contact because we all went different ways when we, were, when we got older. But if you saw, I don't know, someone in the street still shopping, you'd, you'd definitely say hello and have a chat. Um, mm. One of the lads who was actually in my team played for Ebsley uh, the other year in the FA Cup. Oh, nice one. Um, yeah, so that was quite a... We've always played with each other and it was quite a, a fun time playing against him. Managed to get him booked as well. So I got in the oh. ref's ear early doors. So <laughs> he, um, he, had a, he had something to say after the game about that, which was quite fun. Yeah. Is it... Is it... Is it... Um, could you put it out on a family pro show though? Yeah, no, yeah. He's, yeah. Just, he's just like, oh, I can't believe... Can't yeah. believe you got me books like that he was giving it to me and I was like oh no I had to do it and it was just funny to be fair it was funny to see his reaction as well <laughs> so you uh again now uh, I may have this wrong but the the great Ben Pope did you meet Ben Ben Pope in the Brighton system yeah so Ben was Ben was a year younger than me when we were at Brighton um mm. so I've known a Ben for years and then obviously when I uh came back down to Hastings he was already here mm. um so we've always been we've always been really close and playing together has made us even closer I think yeah yeah I mean he's um again and he's he's, he's a legend and uh, t- talking of hair he likes a tidy haircut as well so yeah I think there's a there's a few in the team that are a bit uh precise with their hair a couple, <laughs> couple weeks a new haircut comes in so yeah so uh, yeah um so going back to you sorry right um the you um you were at Eastbourne Eastbourne Borough for a time Yes, yeah. After Brighton. Yes. And they were their conference they were conference yeah. south at the time. Yeah, yeah. So um just from a point of view of being there, was this because Aggie Aggie was there then, wasn't he? Was he there? Yeah, so Aggie yeah. Aggie must have came when I was oh about nineteen, eighteen, I think, um, for a couple of seasons. Um and I've known of Aggie through when he was at Brighton, I was at Brighton, so the names always rung a bell and then when he um mm. when he came down to so uh, Borough, we did actually manage to work together and kind of kept in touch really ever since he left and when I left and as soon as I um well was looking for another club he was yeah. first on the phone to say look come down you know I, I know you you know me and like mm. let's let's make something work so yeah, yeah it, was, it was kind of a no-brainer really yeah so while you were at Eastbourne like I mean what had what did you think of that level because obviously from us from quite a young age as well I mean that's yeah I mean, because uh, I know that while you were there, you got to the Sussex Cup final, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, we got to that and uh, and won that. Um, yeah, the, what, the level what was, was that like. Yeah, it was it was really good actually. It was nice to be in the 
the home change room at Brighton as well. Because when, like I said, when I was there, when I was younger, we always used to do our day release at the stadium and we'd be in the away change rooms and it was just like benches around the corner. So the home change room was um, was something better. Uh, but yeah, no, the standard, the standard was good. It was, there was a lot of ex-professionals that seemed to play in that level. So you'd have oppositions who've played in the football league. You had teammates mm. who played in the football league. So there was so much experience that you could just learn off and, test yourself with and against um it was really it was really good challenging at times because you had mm. some really really big teams and but sometimes you, you uh managed to get a few wins and it was you no know, it was good it was good fun i really enjoyed my time down there because i mean uh, from, from uh, i'm just a humble fan but like for, for me when you're on the pitch you you, you seem to play with like a, an old head you know like you you know wiser above your years you know, you seem to want to organise a lot more. You're very much like you want to be in control, obviously future captain, in my opinion. But the, do you think that maybe some of that from playing with those older professionals, is that rubbed off? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I've also, I mean, I've also, I've been playing men's football since I was 17, 16. So um, I kind of had to grow up and mature as a footballer from a young age. So I um, I feel like I've, might play sometimes a bit older than I am um, in terms of my age and like you said organising but I mean mm. it's just it's just something that you, you have to do on a football pitch really and the more people that can do that the easier it is for for the manager and the team yeah okay so mo- moving on now you went to New Zealand right so what what led to you going playing football over there um, I, well it was originally the plan was to go to Australia um, oh, right. So I had, you I had the wrong loads. plane, did you? Yeah, I know. No, yeah, <laughs> wrong flight. I was like, "Where's this?" Um, no, I was originally meant to go to Australia, and I had a couple of deals sorted out, um, but it just never really finalised around Christmas time in, mm. I think it was 2017. Um, and then I got in contact with a a bloke from back here who sent a few lads out to New Zealand a few years ago, and he just inquired, like, would I ever want to go play in New Zealand? And yeah, I kind of spoke to mum and dad and it was when I left Eastbourne Borough as well. So I was a bit, I had a few clubs after and I was like, oh, I'm going to go elsewhere, try play football somewhere else. I was coaching over there as well. And yeah, I spent 15 months in New Zealand and oh, it was it was brilliant. It was a mm. great life experience. Yeah, well, what's, what's, I mean, not knowing anything about football over in New Zealand, I mean, what's what's the standard like and how many clubs do they have? Do they have, like, is it? Yeah, um, it's, the standard was actually, I was very surprised with how good the standard was. I thought New Zealand's not, don't really hear much of them football wise um, over here in England, but the standard was very, very decent. They have, um, when I was over there, they had two leagues. So they had a winter league where you play, it would be regionalised. So you'd have, yeah. I guess it would kind of almost be like Sussex, Kent, Surrey, all like that. You'd mm. have all your leagues and you'd play, you'd have divisions in there. Um, and then in the winter, uh, summer, sorry, you'd have teams from each region. So then in the summer, you'd go from having loads of teams in the winter to just 10 teams in the summer. But you kind of had all the best players playing for them teams. Oh, and right. yeah, actually, the winners of the um, of the league actually did qualify for their uh, their Oceania Champions League. Oh. Um, so and a, f- a few years ago, one of the teams actually went quite far in the uh, in the Club World Cup, actually. Okay, yeah. I mean, again, I'm, I'm never. I, I mean, I know cricket. I know, I know rugby, <laughs> New Zealand. But I, I, oh yeah, I mean, they're crazy for their rugby over oh, there. Yeah, but football seems to, football seems to be on the up as well. Oh, cool. Um, good, good, they've good. just done. They've done quite well in the Olympics recently with their young team. And yeah, no, it's a, it was it was a lovely place, and I was just lucky enough to play and be able to coach over there as well. It was wicked. Great life experience. Yeah, I've got a lot of mates involved with nursing. Uh, loads of mates go over there in New Zealand. So the place is amazing. Really yeah. nice people, really nice country. So yeah, um, probably a bit difficult to get in and out of at the moment. But oh know. yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's, <laughs> no, there's no chance. Not a chance. Right. Well, so okay. So you, your New Zealand experience come to an end. What brought your move over to Hastings? Uh, just straight away, really. I kind of was. I, coming home I was talking to a few mates as well and who play over here and I was like I'm not sure where to play Tr- try to message a few managers but it was quite yeah. it was getting near the end of pre-season um and I was a bit like I need to be playing and 
text Aggie straight away and was like, look, Aggie coming home from New Zealand, would it be okay to like come training and just see what happens? Mm. And straight away, he was like, yeah, absolutely. Get yourself in. I actually landed home from New Zealand on the Saturday. And on the Tuesday, he was like, we've got a game. Come to the game like straight away. And I think it was Eastbourne oh, Town nice actually one. away. So he was like, come to the game, play for me. And it was kind of signed, sealed, delivered straight away, really. It was yeah. a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean, literally, you just just came straight into the team, made that position your own, really. not It didn't take too long, did it? No, it didn't feel like it. I kind of, Aggie, like I said, when we were at Borough, Aggie knows what how I want to play, what I'm about. I know what he's like as a manager, how he wants to play. And it kind of just fit perfectly, really. Um, um, yes, since then as well, re-signing has been, has been no question with what's happened. So I'm nice. very grateful that he was, he was getting me in the door early doors. Well, talk about being grateful. We're grateful for some of these, some of these cracking goals that you've scored. Now, I've had a number of questions about particularly those wonder goals you got against Seven Oaks. I don't know if you remember them or not. You got oh, them. of course I do. Had to. Had to. Yeah. Of course I remember them. Um, yeah, I mean, your thoughts, like, was it just, it was Seven Oaks and you just thought, well, look, I've got to hit a screamer here. I mean, what, what was it? I mean. I've all, I, I, I do like to have a long shot and both times against Seven Oaks, it's been there and open up um, and just thought I'd have a dig and luckily both of them have gone in. I don't get many a season, but when I do, they seem to be half decent at the moment. Not many. Yeah, Jesus. You, I mean, you couldn't stop celebrating for about two minutes, jumping up and down about those ones. But um, Yeah, no, definitely. No, I mean, again, yeah. I mean, th- these yeah, goal of the seasons. We like goal of the seasons, uh, Rye. Yeah, so- well, I'm still I'm still fuming Stoney picked me for goal of the season the other year. <laughs> raging, raging. <laughs> Looking at Stoney, that that goal he scored, that little f- uh, free iron shot he had against Eastbourne, I thought you in pre season, that was quite tasty. You know the little. Yes, he he gets one a season as well. Normally yeah. in pre season, <laughs> that's him done now for goals. Oh, well, I have to mention that, right? Um, so, how are you finding your time here? I mean, um, I mean, what we're doing so well. I mean, I mean, this is, I mean, some of this is unavoidable, but what we're doing so well. Obviously, yourself personally really cementing your place, but also the team doing so well, and because of COVID and all the whole situation, us not being promoted. I mean, I mean, where where do you see us? Where do you see us going? How do you see us getting on this year? I mean, how are you finding it? How are you finding your time here? Yeah, I'm, my time, I'm loving it. Obviously, first season, so close to the end, we thought it was a bit hard done by. Last season, having only played seven or eight games kind of you're like yeah fair enough we haven't played that much but I think that's why everyone was so keen to to sign on again this year just to like we owe it to ourselves we owe it to the fans like we've been so close um Mm. so that's obviously the big plan this year is to get promoted we like we have to win the league um there's no other option for us and I think that's why everyone has literally jumped on board straight away and you can tell by the last three seasons the core and there's not many that have left. Mm. And if we are, we've been replaced with with boys who know that we want to win the league as well. Um, no, but I've loved my time. The the fan base is brilliant as well. When that when the, the pilot field's rocking, it's rocking. And it does make a difference to us when the fans are singing behind us, cheering us on, and there's nothing better than a three points. Yeah. No, no, this is all true. Um we put uh, yeah, right. Right. You're adored in the stands. I've already mentioned this to you, yeah. So we think your class. I mean, what, what what connection do you feel you have with the fans? Well, I'm not really too sure. Con- considering from Eastbourne, not being a Hastings lad, straight away, as soon as I came, there was a song coming straight away. And I was like, is that <laughs> is that for me? Or um, So no, I'm very grateful. I'm glad I've got a song. And it's nice to hear it being sung on a Saturday or a Tuesday, wherever we seem to be. It gets sung. And no, I'm great. I'm very grateful. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh I'll quickly ask you, we got obviously we've got Saturday's game coming up, Hearn Bay, uh, three points. That's the plan. Um, they're a good team, Hearn Bay. We had them the, last year in the FA Cup and managed to get a 1-0 win in the FA Cup late on. But no, three points is the plan and hopefully we can uh, we can deliver. It's been a long time since anyone's played any competitive football as such. So I think it'll be, it'll be a good game. Good game. Oh, nice one. Well, Ryan, star man. No problem. Thank you.
thank you so much thank you uh, for having yeah, me yeah yeah no take care and well i, I hope I'd, I'd love to have you back on again at some point during the season lovely, lovely stuff but um thanks for your time and now over to rice siegel with his quick pre-season review and what he's doing for this podcast weekly throughout the season for the women's team so we're joined by the lovely and always wonderful ryan siegel who is in charge of match day Twitter for the Hastings women's team, as well as a whole cacophony of other things. He also does these the 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 voice of reason on the PA system during the Hastings women's game, and he does the match report. So he all over he's all over the women's team. And Ryan has said that he could he wants to contribute towards the podcast, and he wants to make sure that there's women's women's content in the podcast which we're both we're both really keen on please ryan what what, what is it you, that you're going to bring well i'd like to bring a variety of things including i'll talk about the actual match and i'll be able to sort of include different details that might not make it into the match report i'll be able to talk about sort of the players the players of the match who brought the best also talk about the unsung heroes the people who weren't scoring the goals so didn't get as many mentions but deserved praise and just sort of bring lots of insight into the camp and just bring your audience as close to the women's team as possible. Oh, excellent. And is there any chance of getting Nick in an interview or two as well? I'm sure that can be arranged. Nice one. So that's going to be... It will, will you be able to do that every week for us? Interviews, I'm not so sure on. But in terms of bringing you reviews, build-up insight, I'll be able to do that every week for you. Brilliant. Well, I'm sure all the listeners will be dead keen on that. We we should support our women's team. Uh, they've done fantastically well. Uh, it's great fun watching them. Well, when I, when I can, but um, I always hear great stuff. In terms of pre-season, running into pre-season, uh, Rye, I, I know that obviously you've been to these games. I haven't managed to get to any myself, so please tell us, how, how have we been this pre-season? Up and down. Yesterday's result was probably the best of pre-season. It was only a 1-0 win, but it was against higher opposition and really showed the team's ability to compete. You go back further there, it's been kind of extreme. Uh, there have been a 13-0 win and a 16-0 win. But there's also been 6-0 losses and 4-0 losses. Mm. So the team has gone to both ends of the spectrum in terms of winning and losing during the pre-season. But that was a natural thing to happen with the amount of players coming in and out of the squad. Yeah, what's, what's, what's that squad looking like? I know that we've lost... Yeah, so we've we've lost a big one in in Izzy Payne. We've lost her goals. I mean, who's come in to replace that? Replace her? Of the confirmed names, there's Nicole Bater, who's joined us from Eastbourne Town. Nicole fits the Izzy mould in the sense that she's a fast, athletic winger with an eye for goal. Excellent, uh, also... Brian. Who do you think's going to be the standout this season? Standout this season. Well, it all depends on where the U's end up, sort of in the league. Obviously, you've got the likes of Georgia Tibble, Molly Hill, who can just change the game on the drop of a hat, and if they do that frequently, will be in the headlines. But there's also players like uh, Vix Phillips, who's been signed for the defence, who's been immense in pre-season, who I think has the ability to lead the team to glory. And I think as well, the likes of Nicole Bater, I think she's shown real promise in pre-season. The new signing, Sean Heather, former Crawley Wasp, who has looked electric when she's played. So if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Sean Heather, because I think she could be a real catalyst to the use uh, advancing through the leagues. OK, OK. Well, f- thanks for those insights, Ryan. And I really do look forward to you, your weekly your weekly segment. Thank you very much. And I'll, I'll, be, I'll be talking to you next week. Speak to you then. And here's our first fan roundtable of the new season. A pre-season review... And look at our hopes and dreams for this one coming. I've got to say a big thank you for Safety Dave, Adam Carter and Adam Smithy for making it happen. Uh, You know, is it Smithy here yet? Yo, peoples. Yo. It's just me and Safety Dave, Adam. We are in the safest possible hands then. Exactly. We are (laughs) in safe hands. And they can come in. Right, anyway, guys. Uh, great uh, you coming along we're talking about pre-season mixed bag uh first of all bit of a mixed bag but we have the one the only that's the man who makes everything safe safety dave safety dave's here 
Hello, Safety There's Dave. There's only one Safety Dave. Safety Dave, Dave. exactly. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's here. And the last time I spoke to you, um, a Russian oligarch nearly uh, bought your contract out, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, first of all, so what's your thoughts on pre-season, Dave? Well, how do you feel it's gone? It's, it's gone all right. It's been mixed, really, but I haven't been involved much. But... Yes, yeah, uh, I mean, well, we've had a few, we've rested quite a few, but like, I mean, obviously some of the younger players, you know, they've been worth a look in. Well, um, to, obviously, in your job role, Dave, did you manage yeah. to get to all the home games? Yeah, all the home games. What were what, what, home games? I mean, obviously, you know, I'd, I'd like to see the full team out in the last friendly, but obviously, players on holiday. And... Well, yeah, fair enough. I mean, I'll give my thoughts before I start handing over to the head of the um, supporters club, HUISC uh, general. Adam Adam Smith, but my, my thoughts in preseason. Just it was nice to see a few a few of the new lads, you know, like um, Marcus Goldsmith and um, Freddie 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 Leg. Yeah, Freddie Leg. He's he's excited. I'm really looking forward to him getting a few games uh, this season. But anyway, look, enough for me, Mister Smith. Yes, sir. A- Agent Smith, H U I S C, Chairman Mao. What, uh, what's your feelings on preseason? I, I think it's been all right overall. I think Aggie's tried a few different things, playing different players in different positions. And I, I think he's tinkering ready for the season so he knows what he can do in any given situation. Uh, I've, I, I've, can, so, hang on, I've just heard it from your lips. You're calling him the tinker man. He is Claudio Ranieri, is that? He's a poor man's Cla- Claudio <laughs> Ranieri, is he? I, I, I think poor man's Ranieri is a, a bit, a bit much. But well, I don't know. What would you? What are you saying to me here, Adam? I, I think he's the English Ranieri. English Ranieri. To me, to me, he's English Jose. So I mean, <laughs> uh, that's just me. We have the absolute honour and pl- pleasure of Mr. Carter. Adam Carter joins us. Thank you very much for your attending, sir. That's all right. Sorry, I was running late. I was dinner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Someone agreed there. So, Adam, your thoughts on pre-season? Uh, the games that I saw, I uh, was very, um, very pleased with the way the club, like the, the, the players, they looked. Um, considering they went up against some tough opponents like Tottenham and Carl Shelton, um, they played well. And obviously, um, in the games that we played where... We we dominated well, um, like against Uckfield, for instance, uh, was really positive. So I see no reason why we're not going to smash this league this year and be in the Prem next year. So let's move on to we might well we move on to the Sammy Adams testimonial. So I, I, as I went to Safety Dave first, Safety Dave, uh, how did you feel it went? I think you know, I didn't see much of the game because we had an instant we had to deal with, but uh, you know, very well. It was, it was good to see everyone again in the ground. Yeah, wasn't it? Wasn't it lovely? It was a lovely atmosphere. I mean, yeah. obviously for 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 Sam, it was great. But like as you say, it was just great to see everyone again. It's lots of people there. Good atmosphere, and obviously you kept it all safe, even though there was an incident. You were all over it. Yeah, certainly were. <laughs> Yeah. So, was it? Did you read the last rites, or no? I'm joking. It was a medical emergency. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. He, he didn't say if he read the last rites or not. Right. The um... <laughs> <laughs> um, right. Okay. Well, moving on to Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, uh, the Sammy Adams testimonial. How do you feel it went? Obviously, Sports Club had some involvement in that. So, do you want to? Speak up. It was a lovely day. Nothing. No, it was brilliant. Seriously, that was a to see all them people there to support Sammy and thank him for everything he's done for the football club is is really nice. And just to to have the the privilege to present him with a little trophy and a a little memento that the supporters club have put together was a real honour. And just to to say thank you to a legend. Because yeah. to be on it at any level, 
there's not many players that will get to uh, what five hundred and seventy odd appearances. No, with nice. one club. I mean, there's a lot of footballers, professional and semi-professional, that won't even play five hundred and seventy games, mm. let alone for one club. So, legend. Yeah, legend. Yeah, no, absolutely, I concur with that, uh, Mr. Carter. Yes, um, I just I thought it was a, a great day. I thought that everything that everybody done, the applauses, the the sort of the um, trophies. Um, the presentations, the it, it just all went so smoothly. It went really well. Um, like Tottenham were very disciplined in that regard. You know, they they did. You know, they, I thought they were very good. They came out, they saluted, like you know, clapped for him. And you know, th- that was his day, and they knew that. You know, I think we played a great game. I think we really did. And um, it just goes to show that even against Premier League opposition we can put up a fight. But I just thought it was, a, it was a great day. Great atmosphere. So many people. It was the first time that we've had over a thousand people in there for a long time. I think we all go along with that. So we're, we'll move on. Well, thoughts for the new season. You know, who's going to be any standouts? Uh, safety Dave, how do you think we're going to get on? And um, is there anyone in particular that you think is going to carry us? I think we're going all right. I think we will get up, but I don't. I think it's going to be tighter than everyone thinks it's going to be. Mm. As for the new players, I, I've got to get to know them first. <laughs> well, don't uh, Dave. It don't have to be one of the new players. It could be one of the other ones. I mean, obviously, Kenny Pope was bloody on fire last season, wasn't he? Yeah. So it could yeah. be it. You never know. Never know. Mm. Yeah. So no one in particular. You think will carry us? No, not right. No, you, you, yeah. Just shut yeah. up, Chris. Just say shut up, Chris. Yeah, <laughs> next time, all right. <laughs> um. So, all right, okay. Well, of myself, uh, I had a bet with George because George was being miserable last game uh, of a hundred pounds, a hundred pounds that we're going up straight up top. I took that bet. You could call me mad. I wouldn't. I would call myself clever. Um, uh, well, I hope there won't be any tears. But um, yeah, uh, and I, I think Ben Pope's going to be the difference this season. Um, I think that his goals and all of the work he does carrying the line will be the reason why we are a, a step above a number of teams in this league. So um, that's me. Um, Smithy? I think, I think Ryan Worrell. Is gonna is gonna be the man this season. Yeah. Watching him in preseason friendlies, he's he's so vocal on the pitch, and I, I've stood sort of halfway line for a few of the friendlies, and I, I think where we stand behind the goal, we miss a lot of what goes on central defensive midfielder and even centre backs. The amount of talking and the amount of leading that that comes from young Mister Worrell. It, he's he's a future captain of that team. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he is. I think he is class. And for anyone here, you know, I am interviewing him on Tuesday, so I have had no questions in yet. Typical, no questions in for this interview. He, yeah, he's he's beautiful, but goals win games. That's just my. Yeah, opinion. but they they got to start at the back. Attack from the back. That's what I like. Yeah, uh, Mr. Carter. Um. I think personally, one of the new guys, uh, Freddie Leg, is going to be. Well, he's got Leg in his name, so he's going to be a legend for the for the season. I think a leg end. Exactly, he's going to be a foot. Um, <laughs> I just, th- yeah, I just think he's. Hang on, hang on. He's unstoppable. <laughs> Sorry. Return I think of, he's return of kazoo for that. I think he's going to be unstoppable this season. I think he's going to run right around a lot of the. Uh, the teams and either score or create create a lot of goals. Um, he just puts a lot of effort into everything he's doing. You can see that in pre season. You can see he's hungry. So I think he's going to be a standout this season. Safety Dave, have you got anything to say to your fans? There is many of them. Um, just make some more noise, and I've got a chance for some of the sports to come up with some new new songs. Aye. We, 
we, we need to sing the Safety Dave song yeah, exactly. at least twice a game at every game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's, 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 Sounds um, like a good idea. I, I think Dave loves this song now. He, he yeah, didn't he at does, the beginning. Yeah. I love it. I never thought that I'll come to the day when the, sp- <laughs> the supporters will be singing my name. <laughs> we, we sing your, your song more than we sing any others. Yeah. <laughs> And no. you know, I, actually, I, just on that, sorry, I, I was chatting to TC and the players actually love their songs being sung and, you know, they, they do listen out. So it is nice to, to hear the players enjoying what we do and what we enjoy behind the goal. Yeah. And a few in the main stand sing. Do they? A few, apparently. Mm. Apparently. Yeah. Yeah, the, the does youngsters. Andy sing? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, Adam, uh, the two Adams. Any, any one things you want to pass on to your to anyone listening? Uh... Everyone should be more Adam. <laughs> I mean, there's already enough Adams in the world. Well, you obviously felt that as you didn't name your son after me. Yes, I know, yeah, to, uh, yeah, and that's why he's punishing me with a lack of sleep. It's because it's like, yeah, I want to, I want to be called Adam. I don't like my name. <laughs> <laughs> Theo, Theo's a crap name. <laughs> Our supporters club doing bits this season. Yeah. Yes. Um, really well received. Gave out a load of key rings at the Sammy Adams friendly. People seem to love that. Um, leaflets around the town. So hopefully we should see more fans at the games. And coming up Sunday, if you're a, if you're a dart dartist, darts player. Yeah. What do you call someone that plays darts? So. Data. What? I don't know. <laughs> if you play darts, um, come and watch the women on Sunday, followed by a little darts tournament. Oh no, we don't want to throw darts the at them. No, not at It's the not women. the bloody seventies, mate. There's no no darts being thrown at anyone anymore. I don't know. I wish I could do my house. <laughs> so yeah, well, come along and throw some arrows. Throw throw some arrows on a Sunday. What time is that again? Five o'clock. So five o'clock. So just after the women's game. Just after the women's game, look out on social media for full information. Uh, sorry, you wanted to know who the women have got next Sunday? Yes, yes go please. Uh, we're at home to Ash Ash Mount Lee. Ash Mount. Oh, the new. It's a new team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. They're a they're a new team that are going into the league that we was in last season. Okay. So, yeah. Watch, right, so- watch Ash Mount Lee and then play some darts. Play some darts. Yeah. So- Definitely. And just as a reminder, leaflets will be given out on the on the gate. All fixtures for the next few months where the supporters club are going to be doing that. We've also got a kiosk uh, by the pilot bar, which will be manned until kickoff. I mean, one thing that we might all need to do is get a bit of a picture taken of everyone that's involved with the committee so that any of you use fans can just approach us whoever it is, and find out about how you join or any of the bits and pieces that are going on. Anything you any... want to know about anything. Yeah. And if anybody is on the on the, And if you want to know with... about safety, you go to Safety Dave. Safety yeah. Dave. <laughs> Sorry, Adam. Sorry, Adam. Go on. No, that's fine. And if anybody out there is particularly into uh, FIFA games, uh, you might want to become a member because there could very well be a FIFA tournament coming up. Yes. Yep. Oh, well, watch this space. Spoiler. Watch this space. Spoiler. Okay, gentlemen. Thank you very much. I will enjoy, I, I presume I will enjoy all of your presence next Saturday. So, I will be there. Depends on the weather because it, I'll have the kids. Okay. Well, that's We have you. a sheltered area for them. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Robbie, yeah. Robbie's, Robbie's doing a kid's crash, isn't he? I think that was one of his oh, yeah, ideas. that was it. That was it. Yeah. And also... Safety Dave will be keeping everyone safe. So he will. So there'll be no troubles. Okay. The children will be yeah. safe. <laughs> yeah, but I can't I can't bring the kids in the sheltered section with all of the supporters there and everything that gets said. <laughs> you can introduce them to all of their new uncles. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's gonna come up in a court case, isn't it? <laughs> and on that bombshell. It's, uh, time to it's time to go. Yeah. Anyway, guys, thank you for popping in. Just, yeah. just these few words. It's very uh, an absolute pleasure to talk to all of you. 
And I'll well done, see Chris. You. Keep doing what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Chris. Take you're care. an absolute legend, mate. Thank you, darling. And safety, day. Keep everything safe, mate. Well, that's it for another week, Hastings fans. We are returning to every Thursday for the coming season. So please be there with us. Remember, as ever, if you want to contact us here, the Twitter is at HUFC Podcast. Or if you want to email us, it's HUFCpod at gmail.com. We also have a YouTube channel, Sussex by the Sea Podcast. Please, please visit that. Like, share, comment. All I've got to say now is I've been your host, Chris Laverick. Hope you have a good week and see you at the game. About bloody time. <laughs>